Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to episode 71 of The Clutch Dump. I'm Nicholas Patty, joined by Ben Walter. If you have not already, make sure to follow us on our social medias at, uh, at The Clutch Dump, all podcasting platforms at The Clutch Dump, and on YouTube at The Clutch Dump Pod. But more importantly, if you haven't, go check out our previous episode because that was our one year anniversary celebratory Would You Rather. And if an Enzo Ferrari versus a Carrera GT doesn't get your mouth juices flowing, then you're in the wrong corner of the internet. It was, a good, it was a good episode. It was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. But I we actually too. have a question for this episode that I'm more excited about because I was thinking. And I was like, hmm, it would just be easy to say, ha, 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 Porsche 911, because everybody's already doing that. Right. But I've come up with a cool but unfortunately predictable answer to Ben's question. But Ben, I'm going to let you narrow it. I've got a list. So it goes. Well, son of a... All right, I guess I'll have to think more. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about this for like four days. Um, But, so, uh, this is, I guess, another... Uh, automotive episode not yeah. a motorsport episode um except instead of covering 17 bajillion different things we're going to cover two things and two things Ooh. in particular um and we're going to start off with the new alfa romeo 33 stradale yes which if you follow the interwebs uh you will have seen this car um it is incredibly pretty and it is um Here's a word for that, man. what sexy Ah, yes. Um, but um, it's a gorgeous car. It is a oh. return to coach building for the Alfa Romeo brand. Um, limited to 33 examples. Um, so it is built by Ford. Because they could absolutely build a run of a thousand or two. And yeah. sell all of them. And they would be able to do it cost-wise because it's an MC20. So... Right, so um, we'll get into some of the reasons. Nick, I don't know how much you deep-dived into this car. I deep-dived, um, I think, at least what was publicly knowledgeable. Okay, so I watched a couple of videos and uh, of some pe from some people who were at the launch of the car, and there were some details that were shared that were actually pretty ridiculous. Um, so if you haven't seen pictures of this car, there will be pictures up on the screen here if you're following us on YouTube. Um, so the new 33 Stradale, obviously taking its name from the original, very pretty Tipo 33 Stradale from the 60s, arguably one of the prettiest cars of all time. It's um, widely regarded as that, yeah. Right, um, definitely top five, if not top three of all time. And, uh, yes, yeah, so this is built by Touring Superleggera, which, if you remember, they built the, uh, Disco Volante based on the 8C a couple years back, uh, that fantastic piece by Jeremy Clarkson, which you probably watched on Top Gear. Um, but yeah, limited to 33, um, based on the Maserati MC20. They haven't stated that, but it's a carbon tub with a twin turbo 3 liter V6, and the oh, only other thing that's stated. Everything I've seen said, not that it was speculated, but like said, it is based off of. Okay, well, point. everything I saw said that it was based off the MC20, but I didn't see anything from Alfa Romeo that said it was based okay, on the MC20. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but to be fair, if, like, that's a great chassis to steal from, so. Yeah, you, you know, no well. surprises there. Um, but. The main focus is the styling, because if you get the MC20-based car, it's the same specs as an MC20. Uh, 675 horsepower, something like that. Not enough. Um, not enough. Uh, never is. But yeah, twin-turbo, 3-liter V6, dual-clutch, mid-engine, very pretty. Um, For anybody who doesn't I, know, the original Tipo 33 Stradale had a mid-engine V8. Yes, a 2-liter V8, to be exact. Just saying, um, we could have which thrown is a V8 in tiny. it and then twin-turboed it, and then... So, by the way, the thing that I'm upset about, which we'll get to in a bit... You're um, upset about one thing, Ben? Well, there's several things I'm upset oh, about with this car. Oh, okay, I understand. Um, <laughs> first starters, incredibly pretty. They're all sold, this and is, they're fantastic. This is one of, from an actual automotive oem because like i don't think it looks as good as roof and some of their cars but okay this out of all the oem special editions beats anything bugatti's done beats yeah. anything ferrari's done beats anything lamborghini's done and i know 
tops a, the new Aston Martin Valor for sure. Yes, and I know I'm a stupid, silly boy. Yes, I I have it tied with the ST because part of me like sitting there and thinking to myself that in period the ST and the Tipo 33 would have been on track together, mm-hmm. and so I'm thinking of an unliveried, fairly plainly specced ST. And mm-hmm. then the Tipo 33 on track right. somewhere. Like, that to me is just... And the 911, obviously, is so classically styled anyway that it, it right. wouldn't look out of place. So, Right. Um. So, but the big news like, about this... Right. Right. Shut up. Right. <laughs> pop, pop. Right. Uh, but one of the big news oh. with this... Or one of the big pieces of news with this car is that there are two variants that you can buy. I didn't so hear this can, part. So you can buy it. With the twin turbo three liter V six from the MC twenty, oh, there's a hybrid power plant, right? Or you can buy a fully electric version. Oh, gotcha. So when it first came out, a bunch of people rushed to Instagram to post stuff about it, and there was hybrid this, hybrid that. It's not hybrid. It's the MC twenty one, or it's an electric one. They haven't finalized the electric one yet. That's why it wasn't at the launch. Um. So, rumors are it's going to be three electric motors, two in the rear, one in the front. Also, um, while we're on it, that Alfa Romeo special livery for the Italian GP and the unveiling of this car, it's just... Looks just fantastic. Cool. I mean, yeah. um, probably the best livery we'll see all year. On hey, Alfa, I got an idea. Why not be proud to be Italian all year? You could do that all the time. And the yeah. thing that I like most about that livery is that the green in the Italian flag isn't quite green if you look at it it's almost no, it's, teal it's the it's the verde color that they offer on the stelvio and the julia oh is it that makes sense um anyway it looks people who are listening i know verde is just italian and also spanish for green but their color is actually something verde that's like the the color name yeah it's got a specific name it's the green off of the julia and the stelvio okay cool that looks fantastic um nick disappeared nick came back um so they're going to offer a fully electric version, um, but we're kind of hoping that of the 33 sold, most of them are going to be the V6. Yeah, well, obviously. Um, because if you're buying one of these, you're kind of buying it for the experience. Obviously, there's going to be some people that think, oh, most people are going to buy the you know, the internal combustion one. So I'll be one of the five dudes that buys the electric ones, and then I'll sit on it for 20 years, and then I'll auction it off for a bajillion dollars in 20 years, whatever. Um but we don't like those people. Anyway, this car, fully customizable. Exterior color, what wheels you want, interior spec, not just interior spec, how you want the dash to look, how you want the switch gear to look. Interior is what it, it reminds Fantastic. me of the interiors, but in a it's much so much more simple way. Yeah. But yeah. Like, not just simpler, it is more beautiful. Like the Pagani interior. While cool is oftentimes there's a lot going on. It's like when you see a Louis Vuitton or a Prada something, and it's just like right. it looks like someone shit on a purse, and you're like, <laughs> I mean, I guess, but no, not for me. So, um, the photos that we saw of the launch car um, has no, you know, no big screen in the middle, no infotainment, doesn't have. Um, I don't even think the car had AC vents in it. Um, you know, very race, very traditional spec, which is why they that that is a customer car. Um, so that's why they chose that car. I'm hoping that some cars get specced in some rowdy colors. I hope we see some blues. I hope we see some in that verde color. To see some of the Monte Carlo blue, that's that deep metallic blue. I want to see. Um, I want to see the green, and I really want to see the gorgeous metallic white that Alpha has. I want to see the metallic white. I want to see the gold that's on the Stelvios. I want to see that. That would be hot. Oh, oh. you want um, to know what it's actually called? It's actually called ogre. Is it? Yeah, like an ogre. That's much less appealing now. <laughs> uh, but it is a great color. You're welcome. Um, I don't think you could put a bad color on this except for like black, because it's it's just no black would look cool too. It would look cool, but the problem is silver would be the only color I'd say don't do. Really? Interesting. Okay, I'm sorry. Black or silver? You think black is going to be look more boring on that car? I hate black cars. Um, and that's just a personal. Like I saw a Here black band off YouTube. Ben said it. He snapped. Heard it here I first. Ha- I hate cars painted black. Mm-hmm. So, 
And it's because it just gets rid of the body lines. You can't see them. The car disappears. Um, <laughs> so, but I honestly, I the, it's such a gorgeous shape. I don't think you could put a bad color on it. Um, so hopefully we'll get to see some fantastic specs. And Alfa Romeo is pretty open with posting those specs of the cars. Uh, like I think Alfa Romeo even tagged the owner of this car in some of their posts. Um, Could you imagine one of those in Viper Green? Ooh, that would be very green. Uh, <laughs> that would be hot. Be super um, hot. But um, the thing that I find most interesting about this is it is a reintroduction of coach building, which is something we don't see very often. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, coach building was very popular in the early 1900s up through really the 1940s into the 1950s in Europe. And basically what it is is you take... And the, the 60s and the 70s. Well, it started to die off. It was heavy in the 20s and 30s. Well, sure. But the, the concept is you take the platform of a car, you know, not the engine and drivetrain, the actual platform of a car, remove the body, and put a custom body on it. Now, what this does is it took a modern sports car, the MC20, right. and rebodied it to look like an old T-33 Stradale. Mm -hmm. So I posed the question to Mr. Patty here. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, what new cars... Or what cars would you like to see Coach built? Take a newer automotive platform, stick an old body on it. Now, there could be... Well, am I answering what old car I want rebuilt, so to speak? Or am I just telling you which platform I want to have something built on it? Either or. So how I did this okay. is I picked an old car yeah, and, an, and a new car, and I stuck oh. them together. Um, okay. I mainly picked an old car and then just figured you would find a new platform, but go for it. Know. So mine is somewhat predictable, but okay. I need to elaborate once I say it. Okay. 944. Because. Understandable. You 928. You got the singers. You got the Gunther works. You got the roofs. Mm -hmm. There ain't no love for the original transaxle. Right. 924 is the original, but. <laughs> but um, there is actually no love for the 924. Um, uh, the 944 on a modern platform, it could be the Cayman platform, but basically take the four cylinder okay. servo that the Cayman has and just put it in the front. There's a way mm, to do Interesting. Um, because the Cayman already has similar weight distribution, the Cayman already is similar, mm -hmm. I mean, not similar size objectively, but in the lineup compared to the 911, it's the similar step down in size. Um, Interesting. Okay. And, but I would want the four-cylinder turbo that when it's in the Cayman, it's supposed to keep it under the flat six. I would want a 944 turbo mm -hmm. or an S2 for the modern era that assuming, because all the cars weigh heavier, that a stock Late 80s, 944 Turbo, weighed about 2,900 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, let's call it a new one on a Cayman platform would weigh, what, 33, 3,400 pounds? That sounds about right, yeah. I want it to make between four and 500 horsepower, though. You could do that, though. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of dudes... Between four and 500, I don't want people to think... That's weird. I don't want it to be like this ravaging, snarly monster. No, but yeah. I need it to have some serious punch. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there and I was like, now here's the question. If it's coach built, I want it coach built either out of magnesium okay. to harken back to the turbo cup. Right. Or I want it uh, coach built hand fabricated with aluminum in the 924 GTP body style. That'd be cool. You get all the wide fenders, mm -hmm. you get handmade turbo fans. And it becomes this, not Franken car, but quite literally, like, if you're into 80s boxy Porsches. Yeah, a best of of the transaxle cars. Best of, but you could do it with the Cayman platform, and you wouldn't, yep. other than up-tuning the engine, you wouldn't have to do much different. And also, yeah. imagine that with the 7-speed PDK. Or That'd, the be yeah. That'd be rowdy. Yeah. That would be fantastic. So that's um, and then you could do it in the Porsche paint schemes where Porsche has all these, you know, heritage packages. The heritage is you pick your country, Germany, Britain, or the U.S., because those were the three country teams that ran the mm -hmm. 924, and then you get that livery done. That'd be cool. That would be rad. Um, so uh, I came up with a list of cars just because I've been thinking about it for the past couple of days, and while I was at work, Josh. By the time you're done. 
jotted them down in my notes. Um, okay, um, so the main thing that bothers me about this Alpha 33 is that the original car was an NAV8 in the new Cars of Twin Turbo 6. Yes, the new car would run circles around the old car. Dynamically, it's far better. You know, I am I have no doubt that the new car, from a performance standpoint, is better than the original one. But... But my problem is that it's a Twin Turbo V6. Now, the thing that does bother me, yes, granted, this would be expensive. Granted, it is also a $2 million car. We haven't brought that up. The new 33 Stradale is like one cheap for that is like 1.7 million pounds or something um so at one point in time i saw a number as big as three million pounds that might be the ev um which by the way incentive buy a gasoline car Mm -hmm. but um here's the thing that bothers me um i know i talk about this car too much but there is a car called the gordon murray t50 no no no. hear me out it has a four liter v12 which means if you chop four cylinders off, it has a 2.6 liter V8. And they already have a manual made it up to that. So they could have gone to Cosworth and said, hey, can you just take four of those off the front and we then give us a... Give them Bye. Yeah. Yeah. And then just get a 2.6 liter V8 that revs to 12,000 RPM and have a six-speed manual. Hey, Ben, I got one for you. Yes. I want... Okay. Need ...on the 2005 Ford GT chassis... With the 2005 Ford GT motor, Mm -hmm. a coach built, and it would have to be proportional because the proportions on old cars are so often screwed up when they're too cheaply thrown on a new chassis. Yep. 69 day Tommaso Mangusta because they have a 4351 in them. That would be fantastic. Um, That'd be good. I thought so. That'd be very good, actually. Um, Okay, so these are the cars that I had. Um... Instead of building a th- Alpha 33 Stradale on the Maserati MC20, uh, you should build a new Jag XJ220 on the MC20 because it had a twin turbo V6 from the factory. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. So you could do a new Jag XJ220. Um, I think we should get a new Bitserini 5300 GT based on the C7 Corvette. Bitserini from the factory had a small block Chevy in it. Um, C7 Corvette, obviously, LT, 6.2 liter, mm-hmm. transaxle, manual, good weight distribution. Uh, you could do the um, the Strata and the Spider, which was the street cars, based yeah. on the standard C7. And then if you want to remake the 5300 GT Corsa, do it on the Grand Sport, get the wide body, the big tires, the good suspension. Or you could even do it on the Z06 if you're feeling spicy. Um, I, like, I like how deep you went to pull these out. Um, Toyota 2000 GT on a new A90 Super Manual. Rebody a new Supra Manual. Interesting. Straight six, twin turbo, but it's the 21st century, so we're gonna we're gonna have some some new tech in there. I but, got it. Dotson yes. Tan sedan on the new Z platform. Ooh, that would be good. Oh, that actually be very. That'd be a good looking car. That'd be fantastic. Oops. Um. So, um, I'm thinking we could do a Jaguar Mm E-Type. Yes, they built the F-Type, which was some design features, but Jag E-Type, based on the BMW 1M wheelbase, actually incredibly similar. Huh. On those. In a straight six, manual, great weight distribution. Um, E-Type based on that. Um, I think we should get a Ferrari P3 slash 4. Based on the LaFerrari. Yes, they did the Ferrari Daytona, the new car, which is supposed to be get some design inspiration from the P3, P4, but I want swoopy lines. I want that glass bubble. Rocking my brain right now. To think. Um, I think we need a Bugatti Type 57 Atlantic. Yes, okay. Keeping it in the Volkswagen family. On a Beetle. Based on an air-cooled Beetle. No. <laughs> Based on... Um, I didn't look up... Wheel- By the way, it's very hard to find specs on a Type 57 Atlantic. Based on either a new Bentley Continental or a Bentley Mulsanne. I can see Keep that. it in the Volkswagen family. Big engine in the front. Yeah. Coach built. Two-door. Swoopy lines. New <laughs> suspension. Incredibly quiet. 
Um, and then the last one I had was, uh, I want someone to rebody a new MX-5 as a Lotus Elan. Like so, that, that was, uh, that was my list that I had. I could do more if I had more time, probably, but those were the first things that came to mind. I um, Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna have to look it up to make sure I get the exact, um, name right, because this is something they made a couple of. And I don't remember. Yes. Yes. Okay. Power. Oh, it doesn't actually have power. It's a tiny car. I well, want. Okay. I want, based on the 911 ST, a new 356 Carrera GTL Abarth. Ooh, good looking car. Fantastic choice. Yeah, so this Let's is uh, the GT3 platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is. Uh, I thought this was a fun idea because, um, you know, if this whole coach, this whole uh, coach building thing, obviously it's profitable because they're making thirty three of them and they're already sold out at two million dollars a piece. Um, you know, so, you know I want nine sixty two on the nine eighteen platform. Ooh, that's actually a very good idea. That's actually quite good. Um, that's fantastic. Come on, let me hear it. I, I, I had another one on here. Um, GT4 RS rebodied as a 904. Ooh. 906 would be more appropriate. Though. Or yeah, 904, 90, sorry. Um, uh, I also had another one on here, but I know that you probably wouldn't like it. Um, CGT rebodied as a 917. Okay, so I was already thinking about it, but you're missing it's, two it's, cylinders. Yeah, it's, you're missing two cylinders was my whole thing. Um, yeah. So, But 962 on a 918 is a good shout. That's a good one. I did not think about that. Um, that's fantastic. So actually, basically what I did to play this game, by the way, was I have a book um, that's just the best looking cars from the 1960s, and I just flipped through that, and I was like, yep, that's cool. What do I want to stick that on? I was going to say, Ben did not in the quietness of his own mind think of Bizzarini. Like that came No, Bizzarini, I absolutely did. I did I not think you. you just you just exposed yourself, Ben. I did not think of Type 57 Atlantic or Lotus Elan or E-Type. Those I did not think of. The E-Type seems like what you would think of. I just didn't think about it at the time. Um <clears throat> Actually, for a lot of these, what I did was I actually thought of an engine platform and what old cars had that engine platform. So that's why I was trying to, so like XJ220 based on an MC20. You know what I want based on the C7ZR1? Okay. I want a Greenwood C3 Corvette rebodied with all Ooh, of Ooh, that would be rad. Also terrifying, but that would be, well, no, because it's a new Corvette. That wouldn't be terrifying, but that would be rad. Uh, that would be so sick. You know what else I want? I want, I mean, it's basically what Muscle Rod does. I want a 69 Charger Daytona based on anything that's new. <laughs> We're building two, so yeah. I'll let you know whenever they're done. Yeah. Please, please, please. Um, and actually, the Superbird, we figured out two weeks ago mm -hmm. that it is not going to be a 392 Gen 3 Hemi um, like you get in a new Charger. Um, it is going to be a twin turbo 392 Hemi. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we, we've got a customer who's got a bit too much money and a bit so too big of an amass. Death wish is what you have. No, it's got like a 355 with rear tire on the back. Dude, I am rocking my bro. You could do some fun stuff with this game. Let's do. Mm hmm. I want a new GT3 RS. Okay. Ripped of its body. Okay. Twin turboed. 935 body work. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> so you want a GT2 RS bodied like a 935? No, but here's why. Because the new GT2 RS has a wider track and it has... Double wishbone front suspension. Yeah. Mechanical upgrades that I think with the, with the method of thinking that the GT3 RS has behind its body design, I think they mm -hmm. would design 935 body work but incorporate a lot more of the inter-body aerodynamics that, that would be rad didn't. you know that is something interesting though i'm surprised porsche hasn't done one of these yet obviously they've given us the concepts the reimagined 356 that we've talked about way too much um 
they did that card, but I'm surprised that they haven't done something like this. You know? Like, they still have the plans for the 918. Why don't they just go and rebuild and redo reimagine 960? Here's the thing, though. The problem with some of these cards, like you talked about, is the proportions. Because the 962 is not a big car. They're tiny. Oh, yeah. You know, thankfully, a 918 is also really tiny, but a 918 is incredibly wide. So right. the proportions, I think, would be a bit off. The, you know, the reason why I think the XJ220 and the MC20 work is because they're similarly proportioned. And the Bitsarini on the C7 Corvette, I think, makes a bit sense because a Bitsarini is a super long, low, wide car. So I think that works on a C7 Corvette as well. I am racking my brain. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fun one. So, any final thoughts before we move on to our other car, Mister? I, I guess not. Let's just let's just go for it. All right, so um, this car, we actually talked about several episodes ago. Um, we, we, we mentioned it. Um, it was one of those episodes where, like, 17 different Resto Mod Porsches came out. Um, 